The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 21st, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Please send that early and send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, a slightly mixed bag out there. That mix is coming from the semis, which are off about 11 points. It's about four tenths percent to the downside. Otherwise, U.S. indices trade to the upside. The uh, Dow's up 207, about six tenths, seven tenths for the S&P or 29, four tenths for the uh, Nasdaq, about 47, one and seven tenths for the Russell. That's a 30 point move to the upside. Tranny's up two and a quarter. New York Stock Exchange, which confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern yesterday, that's up 174 points, a little over one percent. Gold is off 27 bucks. Silver's down 15 cents. Lights we crude up 81 cents. Natural gas off six pennies, the 30 year treasury printing out at 130.23. That is off 23 ticks. Now, lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You got Mercado Libre 30 bucks, two and a half percent. Solar Edge 20 bucks, seven and a half percent. Deckers Outdoor 19 bucks, nearly five percent. BlackRock 17 bucks, nearly three percent. United Rentals 15 bucks, four percent to the downside. It's Karuna Therapeutic, 16 buckaroonies, nearly 9%. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, 10 bucks, nearly 4%. Lamb Research, 7 bucks, 1 to 4 tenths percent. Roper Technology down 7. Public Storage off 6. That's a 2% move for it. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. Let's begin by taking a look at the U.S. equity futures. We'll do that by seeing that we now have bottoming patterns for all four equity future contracts. I believe we discussed this yesterday. We've got a Gartley buy pattern, a buy the D point, and the ES mini. The same thing inside the NQ. Same thing inside the Dow. When it comes to the Russell 2000, well, yesterday she formed a TD nine count bottom. Now, we're basically at resistance for three of the four instruments. Those three of the four being the ES. We do see prices trading just above the top of its profile. We're trading right now at 4000 and uh, 14, the top of that profile is 4,007. I can't, I don't expect the market to just run away from here. And probably at day's end, um, we see price settle right in this area or just below that 4,007 ish range. If we take a look at the Dow, Dow equity future contract ran right up into resistance, the top of that daily profile. How does that work? We don't know. We just know that it does work, and you and I use it, and it gives us a competitive advantage. So price, where did it find resistance? Well, it actually traded up to a high of 32,821, the top of that profile, 32,797. It's a bear structured profile. Don't expect price to close above this. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, which confirmed that, Rhodes, uh, that TD9 count 
uh, pattern yesterday, it is also in the uh, process of attempting to form a new profile. Now, I say attempting to form because we're using my advanced Doppler tool out here. It detects profiles as they're trying to form, but we don't get confirmation of that until the next, until the opening of the uh, next uh, session, which is going to be at 6.01 this evening out here. But nonetheless, it's worked pretty well. The hive today inside the Russell's 1808 and the top of that profile, 1810. So here's what we know, where we don't have resistance in essence is really inside the NQ. So there's the possibility that one could call the trading session uh, from the 17th, that would be on a Friday. The high of that could be the B point of an A to B. The problem is the C point would have been the low from yesterday. And that low from the high to the low, it's less than a point, way less than a point three eight two retracement out there. I think it's 28%. 26%, 28%. So I'm not sure whether that's a B point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. What we do know, though, is that price is trading into the swing point from February 2nd. And that's really all that we do need to know. And as long as price remains in that swing point area, 12,362, odds favor that price will go test that high. Let's go ahead and put a line in here for what the high of that swing point is. I can colorize it later on. But that's up at the uh, 13,068 level. It's not, whoops, I just kind of screwed that up. That's okay. Uh, it's not TD9 support. I just need to uh, get rid of that. Let me just do this here real quickly and just turn that piece of it off. There we go. So most more likely than not, what we should see, so here's what I kind of expect out of Powell's comments tomorrow. If the NQ hasn't spiked up to test that 13068, I expect that it will do that at least. Now, whether it takes that out or not, I don't know. But we're trading inside that swing point. We got inside there four days ago with volume out there. We're still inside it. We're above profiles. So really what price should do is at least go up and at least spike that high, maybe take it out. If it takes it out, it could set up a much larger A to B equals CD. And Stevie's not going to have to worry about whether the trading session high from the 17th was a B point or the low from yesterday was a C point because we'll just have a larger A to B equals CD to take a look at. So overall here, we've got pretty much everything at what we'll call resistance. Again, the NQ is just kind of out there. We'll have to take a look at its intraday charts to try to get a figure out figure what uh, uh what patterns are out there that are kind of slowing things down now i do i do mean slowing things down because when we take a look at the market breadth here for the nq it should have no problem rallying and continuing to rally if I take a look at the market breadth, you are the speed dials. If you're looking in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see they are all set to bullish. We just simply take a look at how bullish you ask. A great question. Let's find out just how bullish they are. If we take a look at the 60-minute uh, time frame, we've got 63 above profile, 11 below. Above profile says you're trading above resistance. Below profile, below support. That, in essence, gives us our bullish crossover. That's on the one hour. Pretty bullish. If we take a look at the four-hour chart out here, what we have is uh, 56 above, 9 below. Very bullish out there. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, 40 above, 14 below. That's that's pretty darn bullish, too. And lastly, if we take a look at the weekly chart, right now you've got uh, 26 above and 17 below. So from a market breast standpoint, the NQ should be able to rally its socks off. But we've got Powell and we've got the other instruments that are up at resistance levels. You know, the NQ has kind of been talking to the ES saying, hey, come on, don't you want to rally with me? Well, if we go take a look at the market breadth for the S&P 500, we're seeing something slightly different. Now, I'll start with the daily time frame, which is still in a bearish crossover, only slightly. Now, what I mean slightly is there's 103. Well, it's in a bear. Yeah, 103 above, 155 below. So that's more than slightly. So that's pretty bearish. That's why the daily time frame is saying, yeah, I like trading above the top of this profile. But quite frankly, Mr. or Mrs. NQ, I don't have the strength to be able to continue to move higher out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to take a look at uh, NVIDIA for Dan and the Den, Microsoft and Apple for Muck. And of course, folks, I'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome, folks. Dow's up 242. Uh, actually, we've got everything green now. The semis went uh, green just slightly. Let's go take a look at uh, some of the requests that have come in, and uh, thanks for that, uh, folks. The first one that we are going to uh, look at is going to be NVIDIA. We'll get to those charts right now. If we take a look at NVIDIA, this is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan, as I look at NVIDIA, I see on the daily time frame nothing but bullishness. Why is it bullishness? Well, price is above the top of its daily profile. Price is above a green oscillator and change line that tells you momentum is uh, to the upside out there. Now, there is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. And should we get a bearish reversal candle, that would then confirm a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, you would need to see price get below its green oscillator and change line for that pattern to get any downside traction out there. If it did, then the next level of support, unless there's a new profile that forms, would basically be a 223.38. But all out bullish on the daily time frame. We have pause on the weekly. The weekly formed, completed a TD9 count uh, pattern last week. That uh, should take price back down towards its oscillator and change line. However, and just like I said on the weekly time frame, we apply the exact same set of tools to the daily chart. Even though it has a confirmed top, price is above the green oscillator and change line. It is above the top of its profile. So therefore, we have a valid top, but what we really have is a neutral signal. So the weekly says, just be cautious. If you get a trigger on the daily time frame that has got a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top, then we would see lower price because the monthly chart is saying, Steve, -O, I don't know what the daily and the weekly are doing because, quite frankly, for the monthly, it's just noise. And the monthly says, I've got a TD9 count bottom and my sights are set on that breakdown area. And that's up at 289.46. So, longer term, we know that NVIDIA wants to go target that 280. And it is also very bullish above the green oscillator and change line and above the top of its profile out there. So, we take a look at NVIDIA. It looks really, really strong. If we look at uh, pullbacks out here, consecutive day pullbacks. 
um, what we have seen since the uh, bottom that formed out here back in uh, December. We've seen uh, mostly two-day pullbacks. We did see one four-day pullback. And here lately, we're just getting one day, one day wonders out there. So we actually have six. This could be the seventh consecutive session, Dan, uh, to have higher highs. So we do see some time periods of that uh, here. The most recent one was back on October 25th. And that led to just simply an inside bar, a pullback, a retracement. We had the same thing take place out here on August the 4th. Now, that led to, you know, a few day pullback and actually the market ended up moving lower there. But I, I would suspect that there was some other signal that was present at that top on August the 4th. So what the charts for NVIDIA say is they are bullish as can be. Just got to be careful with regard to the data daily message because of the weekly message out there and then act accordingly. So I hope that helps you out, Dan. Thank you very much for that request. The next request coming in from um, MUK inside the Tiger's Den. Muck wants to take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft trade out at 270.89. What do we have right now? We do not have a topping pattern inside of Microsoft. But what we do have is a big old profile. This is brand new. The top of that profile is up at 279.57. The center is at 275.81. And the bottom all the way down at 249.49. Now, this is what's referred to as a bearish structure daily profile. My experience is that when price is able to close below the center of a bearish structured profile, price will push lower. So push lower to where? Well, push the first, pl uh, first place first place first area that price will push lower into should be that green oscillator and change line that's at 266.67 don't hold me to the penny because that's going to change up and down as price moves up and down but it's that green oscillator and change line if price tests that level and rejects that level then that would be a bullish signal and price will move higher if price closes below that expect a further retracement with a potential final destination of 249.49 so the daily in summary at this stage no top but you're back inside profiles, price should go target that red os or the green oscillator and change line. On a weekly time frame, we closed above the top of that weekly profile. Last week was suggested to move up to the 293.30 level. Right now, we're testing that level. Was old resistance now new support? I don't know the answer to that, but we will know at the end of the week. That would be a that would be the case if price closed above 271.02, and that is old resistance becoming new support. If price closes back underneath that profile, it says it was a false breakout to the top side. If we look at Microsoft on a monthly time frame, finding resistance right at that green oscillator and change line, but also has support at 251.16. So overall, with regard to Microsoft, well, let's take a look at what it's going to do or likely going to do, which is going to be day number two of its consecutive moves to the downside. Now, we don't know that for sure. If we take a look at past moves to the downside, Microsoft, geez, we've seen a five-day, a two-day, a four-day out here. So we don't see some consistency like we were back in this section of the uh, chart where it basically had, you know, two and three day knee jerk reactions to the upside to the downside. Um, that's about all that I've got for you on Microsoft. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Mike. I also know you wanted to take a look at Apple. So let's move over and take a look at the Apple charts out there. If we take a look at Apple right now, trading out at 157.07, we do not have any kind of a topping pattern. Now, there's a road momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. Those are identified by those diagonal lines out there, those black diagonal lines. And that means that if a bearish reversal candle were to form, then you would get a confirmed road momentum indicator top. Short of that, price should continue to move higher. Apple is bullish. It is above its daily profile levels. It is above its daily green oscillator and change line. As we move to the weekly, we understand why Apple is having some struggles right here, right now. And why is that, Steve-O? Because prices run right smack dab into where the sellers are located, and that is at the top of the weekly profile. That top is at 157.38. We are at 157.22. If price can overcome 157.38, and that is on a weekly basis, then that would be telling us how to move up to the 162.74 area or 168.79. But look at the 30 minute time frame chart here for Apple, what we will see is a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now what price should do is it should at least make its way back to support. And that first level of support now that price is under a green oscillator and change line would be out at the 156.46 level. If, in fact, Apple were to close below 156.46, we could or should see a run anywhere between 154.42, 154.78, and 155.20. That's what I see when I take a look at Apple for its 30-minute time frame. If we take a look at um, 
anything else? There's nothing else out here really to show you. I guess I can show you a consecutive days. Oh, you know, we can do one more thing here. I guess we've got a little bit of time, and I'm rolling through these relatively quick. Um, yeah, I, I, Apple, 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 Apple. It looks like it should continue to rally. But again, Apple's going to be stuck here waiting for Powell. So I think much like the market, if we take a look at Apple out here with the weekly finding resistance at the top of the profile, it kind of explains what it is that we're seeing. We saw that with regard to equity future contracts, with the NQ being the exception. But since Apple is probably the number one holding inside the NASDAQ 100, we'll let Apple speak for itself out there and we can see that it's trading right into that resistance area if we take a look at what apple has done over the years where it's at in a seasonal uh, set of charts right here we can see that apple this is a chart for 42 years typically continues to move higher and doesn't top out until about may the 8th out there i'm not guaranteeing you that that's what's going to happen but as you can see apple usually has a positive march it is june that is the tough time frame for apple in september at least that's how it's been over the last 42 years. Steve Rhodes with TFN. would love to hear from you folks. 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a look at the charts here for uh, Tesla. Uh, one second, let me type something in here. Bitcoin, we'll try to figure that one out there for you. Um, if we uh, says so seasonality chart for Apple that you just showed had the level at the beginning of the year about the same at the end of the year, 
Clearly, the last 42 years, Apple's gone much higher. Does the seasonal chart not reflect the overall move in the stock price? Over? It's just showing you the act, the average movement uh, between January and uh, December of the uh, year. It's, it's just showing you what the average – I wouldn't pay attention to price. I would just pay attention to what the average seasonal cycle is doing, not values, just with regard to the pattern. In fact, let's let's take a look at it like this. Um, well, actually, I think we might have a, a caller. Um, that's Tesla, Steve. No, I know. I'm showing Tesla. The question was about, inside the Tiger's Den was about Apple uh, from McGuppy over here. So let's do it like this, McGuppy. So we're taking a look at Tesla. But let me just pull over the Tesla seasonal chart. So we take a look at here. So I've taken so in the case of Tesla, I'm going back 12 years. We can put Apple up again, but we're just taking a look at the last 12 years worth of data. This how I use this. This is not with regard to price, right? This is on a scale of 96 to 112. You know that's not where Tesla is uh, printing at right now. So this is really just going back and uh, giving you where the average movements are historically. Um, you know, between January and December of each year. So what this tells us in the case of Tesla, uh, so from a seasonal standpoint, we know that Tesla and the red line, the red vertical line, is where we're at today. We know that Tesla basically makes a bottom around this time of the year, whether it's actually on uh, March the 17th or on March the 24th, that we don't know, but we know it to be expecting a bottom. And then Tesla typically, so we're now moving into the overall favorable, a favorable seasonal cycle for Tesla which uh, it ends in about the uh, third week of April, April 22nd to be exact. If we take a look at uh, March is out here, March is the worst performing month for uh, Tesla. But it's just about to, as we can see, because it's moving down. But it should be starting to move to the upside. Now, one way to use this tool out here is to understand the seasonality, right? Um, but look, I, I live on the beach. And I can, you know, you you've got to watch the waves, when you're out there. Just because there's some seasonal wave pattern out there, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be present. But when it is present and it helps to identify and you can identify some kind of a bottom pattern out here, well, that provides some power. So when we do take a look at Tesla. What we have out here is a confirmed by the D point pattern. So it was more than a one to one A to B equals CD. Just a, the, the A to B would have gone from about here to here and then the B to C uh, would uh, be over Right from that level out there, it makes a move. It didn't confirm this uh, by the D point pattern until it generated that bullish reversal candle. That was yesterday out here. Now what we have in the case of Tesla is prices trading above the top of its daily profile. The top of the profile resistance where sellers reside is 189.51. Now I don't know if by day's end those sellers can really muscle up and push price back. Um, uh, you know, they, they may, but otherwise right now it looks like that's not the case. It looks like Tesla's going to continue to move higher, take out resistance, and continue to move to the upside. Now what Tesla has is an A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's take a look at that on the daily time frame. Let's just spread this out just a tad. And so the A to B point is going to look like uh, this out here. And then the, I'm just going to move the C point basically like that. So you've got an A to B equals C D. One to one gives us up to about 197, 198. We'll call it out there with regard to Tesla. I'm not saying that that is where price will stop. Let's go. So Tesla on a daily basis where we know take a look at the seasonal chart. It typically forms a bottom right about now. We saw that. It actually confirmed that bottom pattern yesterday. When we take a look at the weekly and the monthly charts, they have confirmed by the D-point patterns. Now we're just simply, they, they confirmed those patterns. Well. well, in the case of the monthly chart, it was two months ago. In the case of the weekly chart, it was many weeks ago. If we take a look at what they're doing now, price on a weekly basis is trading with inside a bullish structured profile. And to close this week above 186.83 really suggests that price should make its way to 217.65. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, there is a new profile that is formed. The top of that profile, whoops, the top of that profile is up at 229.53. 229.53. So um, and it looks like that's really so. Price wants to go target 229.53, and in the case uh, and 217.65 on the weekly, and you've got that A to B equals CD to the upside. So, uh, McGuppy, did that help? Uh, well, let's let's do this. Let me just uh, put the uh, the seasonal chart back up here. We can do this very quickly. We can type in Apple. We'll pull up that seasonal chart. And again, with regard to that seasonality, that's just 12 years worth of data. Let's get 42 years worth of data out here. This does not mean that price is going to end up 
where it starts here. This is just a this is just a value 94 to to 108. However, it's averaging things out uh, out here. This is just simply telling us directionally when we're in favorable and unfavorable seasonal cycles out there. So that's how I uh, look at that, McGuppy, and I do hope that that helped answer your question with regard to Tesla. The next request out here is to take a look at. Uh, nope, that wasn't it. It was to take a look at uh, Mo, uh, Mosaic. MOS is the uh, ticker symbol. Now, with regard to Mosaic, uh, Dano wanted to take a look from a longer term standpoint. First, Dano, what we have here is that yesterday was the confirmation of a TD9 count bottom pattern. That low formed on the uh, bar following bar number nine. That needed to take place yesterday in order to generate that bottom signal. Now, today we have a gap to the upside. That is another bullish signal out there. What price should do from here is make its way up to that oscillator and change line. Currently printed at 47.72. Again, that'll change as price moves up and down. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, so we don't have a bottom pattern per se here. What we do have is price pulling back to support. And that can be a bottom. And that was at the bottom of its weekly weekly profile and that low was 43 4 or that the low but the profile low was 43 14 so now what you have is a consolidation with inside that profile dano where price should find resistance is at its oscillator and change line so you have 47 73 on the daily you have 48 47 on the weekly from a monthly perspective Mosaic has pulled back inside its profiles there right now, but support, as we've seen here from a few months ago, was at the center of that profile at 42.73. So I like Mosaic. It's got a nice, uh, it's got nice daily patterns out there. On a 30-minute basis, what is Mosaic uh, communicating to you and I? The answer is not much. It's got a nice roadsmentum indicator bottom pattern that formed at 10 o'clock in the morning. That was on March the 20th. That was yesterday. Price here should target 47.15. That is its TD9 count breakdown level. Now, that's what you'd love to see Mosaic close above to tell you, at least on the 30-minute chart, that you're beginning to see a change in trend out there. So I hope that helps you out, Dan. If there's something else that you needed, please let me know. I'll be happy to get to that. The next request is to take a look at I don't know if it was a request, but we went along with it being typed is PRQR. As we take a look at this, it's trading out at 372. What PRQR is doing is trading up into a swing point from January the 6th out there, and that is a high of 375. Volume there was 6.3 million shares. So far this week, you're at 2.1 million. Last week, you were at 4.7. So you're at 2 million. It seems like you've got pretty decent volume. So if, in fact, you can get a close above on a weekly basis, a close above 378, you're going to get an A to B equals CD to the upside. On the monthly time frame, it just simply says that you could begin to see a TD9 top form between this month and uh, we're in uh, what, March, April, and May. Uh, so you've got a bit of time out there, and that allows that A to B equals CD to continue to move to the upside. On a daily time frame, price is dealing with resistance, Dano. It is this uh, candle session here from the trading day of January 3rd. Not that it was a confirm confirmation of a pattern or anything, but it was a dark cloud cover. It is a bearish candle, and therefore that is resistance. So your resistance, find a resistance out here, $3.78. You close above that, I believe this continues to move to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So right now you've got the uh, – oh, I just need to get back to that chart. What are the U.S. markets doing? You've got uh, all the U.S. future indices, I should say, trading the upside with the exception of being the sum as they're off 26 points. We're taking a look at Credit Suisse out here. Uh, this was for S1 inside the Tiger's Den. So as you take a look at Credit Suisse, what we see out here is we see two bottom signals. We see wave number seven, that's letter G, a very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave. As long as we don't get a lower low today, that would identify this as a bottom and suggest our price will move all the way up to the oscillator and change on around a buck 97. You also, yesterday, formed bar number eight of a TD nine count. You will get a completed nine, TD nine count pattern on Credit Suisse. So you've got two, count them, two bottom signals on that daily time frame suggesting that Credit Suisse should bounce up to the 197 level. Now, I'm not suggesting that you take that trade, but uh, somebody is looking at that. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, I do not have any kind of a bottom out here. On a monthly basis, this should be a bottom. Why should it be a bottom? Because we are in the bar following bar number nine out there. And in 97 cents, I'd have to say, if Credit Suisse doesn't... Uh, uh, doesn't survive, you know, if this isn't the bottom, then I guess it's going to zero out there. So that's what I see when I take like a Credit Suisse on a daily basis. If you're trying to justify, is it was worth a, you know, a short-term trade? Um, the answer is you do have the uh, bottoming patterns out there, S1. So I hope that that helps you out now on an intraday basis, which is probably the more important charts to be looking at out there. But you want to understand on a daily what you've got. On a 30-minute chart, you do have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, but it's just sideways movement out here. So some accumulation, I suppose, but uh, nothing that is really moving to the upside. Might want to look elsewhere. Uh, but that's uh, what I see when I take a look at Credit Suisse. Next question coming in from HD. This is by email, and he wanted to take a look at the uh, GDX and Hecla out there. So we take a look at the GDX. You've got a gap to the downside right now. You've got, uh, depending on the close, a Three River Evening Star. So do we have a confirmed sell the D point? That's the question. Here's the A to B on this. Let's move this over to the C point, see what we've got. And, you know, it hasn't really completed that one-to-one. -one. I mean, the one-to-one -one yesterday's close, high close around 31.28. This would get us up to about 31.69. I don't really know that that qualifies as a uh, sell the D point pattern out there. In fact, I would, I would say that it doesn't. 
Okay, so now what do we have? Well, what we do have with regard to the GDX is it's pulling back and testing what should be old, what should be new support, old resistance. That was the top of its profile. And that level out there was a 29.83. We can see prices pulled back and tested it. Now, if price closes underneath 29.83, you know it's going to go and make a run for the green, or the red oscillator and change line, which is near the center of its profile, 28.86. That's what I see when I take a look at the daily time frame out here. On a uh, weekly chart, I can say I need to redo that A to B equals CD pattern. What do we have out here? On a weekly basis, price is back inside its profile. So if it's back inside there, sellers have the edge at this stage, and they could push price down to about the 2904-ish area. Now they could push it down to 2813. It's just that 2904, 2929 would be the next target area. Your above profile in the oscillator and change line on the monthly time frame, so that looks okay. The daily looks okay. I realize it's a pretty significant pullback, but you've got gold back, 32 buckaroonies right now. So the GDX is holding up fairly well. Let's look at the 30-minute time frame. If we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart for the GDX, what we're going to see here is that price is below its breakout level of support. That's after forming a road momentum indicator top. Um, that suggests that price, as long as price remains below 30.10, 28.70 becomes a potential target area. So will that become a potential target area? I don't know. It just depends on how strong old resistance, which has now turned a new support, becomes out there. So uh, that's what I see when I take a look at the GDX. Let's go take a look at Hecla. see if there's any other information here on Hecla. Ticker symbol there, HL. Now, in the case of Hecla, this does look like a completed sell the D point pattern or a Gartley sell pattern. The A to B will draw that in there. We're just going to move that line over to the C point. That's going to be the low of that retracement and now you can see this did make a one to one a to b equals cd pattern out there and if today we continue to get this bear sash candle at day's end that is going to suggest a pullback at least to five dollars and 41 cents five dollars and 41 cents is the uh red oscillator and change line and below that is the top of its profile 503 so 503 to five uh, five i'm sorry 533 to 541 is likely where Hecla is uh, pulling back to. 30 minute chart out here for Hecla. What do we see? I don't see much, but continued closes below 558. We only saw one. But if you get two consecutive close below 558, that's a suggestion of a move back to the 538 level out there. So that's the GDX and Hecla, and that was for HD. Tim M wants to take a look at uh, Pan. Um, Palo Alto Networks out there. P-A-N-W is a ticker symbol. Palo Alto Networks right now is trading above the top of its bear structured daily profile. That's a bullish signal. Of course, you'd like to see two consecutive sessions close above 189.79. There is a Rhodes Mintum indicator pattern that is still present, that is still the top, and that's the one that formed all the way out here on February 27th. That high is a key level of resistance, 192.47. It would take a close a close above 192.47 for uh, Palo Alto Networks to get on the bullish zone again for the daily time frame. Now, on a weekly time frame, Palo Alto Networks will complete a TD9 count top this week. And that suggests a pullback to support. Now, the first level of support on a weekly basis is going to be 192.84. But we're trying, that's, a, okay, well, it's not going to pull back to that. It'll pull back to the center of the profile, 183.50 uh, out there. But we do know 192.84, that's the top of its daily profile. That's resistance. I think Pan American, Pan Palo Alto Network. So the monthly chart is very bullish. So possibly, possibly this thing will negate its TD9 count top on a weekly basis. I, I, I don't know. I think the daily is really more of a neutral-ish type signal right now. The monthly is bullish, and the weekly is cautious out there. So that is the best that I can do for you with regard to P Palo Alto Networks. Tim, I do hope that that helps you out. The next question that came in is to take a look at Bitcoin. So if we take a look at uh, Bitcoin out here, that is the April contract. And I believe the question was, is there a TD9 count top? And the answer is not that I see when I take a look at the April contract. I believe that's what we are trading out here. Uh, you are in going to form bar number seven today out here. But let's go take a look at. So that was just a question about that. Let me go back and what is GBTC? What is G? What is GBTC? I think so. Right? Does that uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust GBTC? So that's the other thing that I could look at. 
uh, for you. And let's just see if this populates. If this gives us a TD9, nope, this doesn't give us a TD9 count top. What, what GBTC is signaling to, and that gives us a wave number seven top out there, but it also has a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. And if we get a bearish uh, reversal candle, which is what we've got right now today, that would confirm a top, and that would suggest price pulling back this on GBTC back to the 1416 area out there. So uh, I hope that that uh, helps you out. We do have a couple of more requests that have come in. One is for BBAI and the other is for PXD. So we get back from this break. That's what we're going to do is take a look at those requests out there. Steve Rhodes with TFN and again, all the U.S. Indies trading to the upside. The exception being the semis are up 36 points, a little over 1% to the downside. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go take a look at B, 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 is it BBAI? Did I get that right, Dan? Did I screw that up? Yeah, BBAI. So as we take a look at this, this has a nice TD9 count bottom. That pattern is going to complete uh, today. Uh, price has got a new bullish uh, structure, daily profile, support there, bucks between buck 75 and a buck 88. Now what price has done today is they're in right up into resistance. That's that red oscillator and change line. That's the line that you need price to close above. Now, if it closes above 219 or thereabouts, uh, what price should then do is run up to 257. That would be the next battle. And above 257, you'd have a final battle, and that would be at 298. 
398. You clear 298, then you're heading up to 368. 368 is the center of its weekly profile. Monthly, not enough time uh, has uh, elapsed uh, since this has started trading to really provide us with enough data out there. So on the daily, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom that's in play. Price finding resistance, if we can clear that level, you know where those next battles are at. Let's take a look at PXD. This is for SNP inside the Tiger's Den. PXD um, is uh, what? What's it doing? So I see a buy the D point pattern uh, that was established here by that uh, bullish piercing candle that formed on March the 16th. Now what we have is price above that red oscillator and change line. What price should do is make its way up to resistance. Resistance is the top of the profile, 205.83, but just above that is its TD9 count breakdown resistance. So the battlegrounds, the upside for PXD should be 205.83 to 209 even Steven. On a weekly basis, price is pulled back, bounce support at its breakout level of 177.12. I don't see a bottom pattern just yet. That could take up place though and get a bullish reversal candle at week's end. On the monthly time frame, monthly is going to rely on the strength of the daily and the weekly because if those falter, the monthly says, I'd like to go tag that 143.63 area. That is where price had broken out from most recently. So, folks, I want to thank you for uh, all of the requests today. It uh, makes the uh, show much easier for me, it keeps my mind off of things, if you know what I mean. And if you don't know what I mean, we're going to end the show the only way we can. Sell when you can, not when you have to. Folks, have a terrific Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday. Take care.